function generator has had a location for each speaker blocked out in black, where this location is going to be controlled by these dials, and this location is going to be controlled by these dials. When plugging in your speakers, the red banana clip is always going to go on top, or in this gray slot, where your black or green one is going to go on the bottom. Of course, there are instances where you do want to swap things. That's just a general rule of thumb. You also need to pay attention to the scale you're using. Right here can determine the step size. Right now we're at 100, so that's 600, 700. If I switch over to the thousands, I'm now at 7,000, 6,000, then 5,000. So be aware of how you're changing your frequency. The first thing you can do is you can start demonstrating nodes and anti-nodes. So all you want to do is plug both speakers in to the same channel. This way they're generating a frequency at the exact same frequency. Then all you have to do is hold the speakers up and you can twist them around the classroom changing the location of nodes or anti-nodes. But I always think it's kind of fun if you actually ask your students to walk around the classroom and try and see if they can figure out where the nodes and anti-nodes are. The next thing you can do is you can show beats. So for good beat frequency, you're going to plug one of your speakers into one channel and the second into another channel. Then you just want to make sure that the frequencies differ by a tiny bit. The final thing you can do is if you actually swap the leads here, you can do a really cool demonstration with destructive interference. Since the alternating frequency is going to be coming out at different maximums, when you place the speakers towards each other, they cancel each other out. You can then rotate them outwards and back in for a noticeable difference.